And welcome back everybody, Frank Kennedy here. Glad you're sticking with me through this journey uh, because this episode is gonna get really cool because this is where things become very murky and confusing and take a lot of years to work themselves out as is sometimes the case with writing. I don't typically like to spend years writing a book. It seems like an awful long time to get somewhere, but this book that I'm gonna be talking about today as it turned out, did take many iterations and many years before it finally got to its sweet spot. Now, I've talked in the past about The Collectorate and The Father Unbound, and originally The Father Unbound was a one-off book. Even though its ending leaves many questions and leaves many possibilities. And I knew after some time I did want to get back into the universe of The Collectorate but I wasn't entirely sure how. In the meantime, I had this other idea for a book, and I wanted to do a combination of 24 and a teenage adventure. Now, 24, many of you may remember, fantastic um, counterterrorism series, took place, started back actually in 2001, lasted about eight or nine years, uh, Jack Bauer to the rescue, and this, of course, was done in real time. So 24 episodes in a season and before every commercial break and at the end of each episode, you saw the time of day. And so it kind of played out like that. It was kind of an action Jackson sort of story, constant thrills and suspense, uh, but always these crazy twists and turns and you had a ticking clock. And I love the idea of the ticking clock. And so that's where the notion for The Last Everything originally came up. And here is your title, The Last Everything. This was not the last, excuse me, that was the last title, but it wasn't the first title of this book. In fact, there were many, many things that came before I got to this point. So I came up with this story, and the story begins in a small, sleepy town in Alabama. In the middle of the night, we have three teenagers, uh, Jamie, Sammy, and Michael. Although originally, the, the main character, Jamie Sheridan, was actually named July Jackson. That went through a couple of iterations. Nah, didn't really work so well. Thought the character seemed, the name seemed a little bit too, uh, too backwoody. So improved a little bit, made it a little bit stronger uh, in Jamie Sheridan. And so that story... Um, began and I got the layout for it and I got an eight hours I got eight hours this is gonna be great there's something in this kid Jamie Sharon he's 17 and he's fed up with the world he's got a lot of anger issues and something has been triggered inside him he's got eight hours and in eight hours he gonna die or he's gonna become maybe a god maybe a monster could be anything. And we've got a lot of folks in town who we thought were his friends are now out to kill him. And some others are trying to protect him. And so we kind of go along from there and it's tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. A lot of movement. It's a very violent story. A lot of gunplay, some explosions and all of that kind of stuff. Again, the 24 influence came into this book. So I wrote it and I was pleased with it but it was not connected to the collectorate. It wasn't connected in any way to Father Unbound. The larger mythology about what was happening to this kid was um, kind of indefinite. And I really didn't know where that book was going uh, afterward. And so ultimately, um, after it went through a few iterations, went through an agent who almost bought the book but decided not to, I was kind of actually kind of glad about that because then it allowed me to figure out, ah, I have a backdoor way into the Collectorate. And I figured out how what's going on with these characters will allow us to move forward, cross the universe, into the Collectorate, knowing that I really couldn't do a whole series of books in these eight-hour ticking clock formats. That's fine. But it really gave me um, a great opportunity. And... Uh, ultimately, uh, the novel went through a number of different titles as well. Um, at one point, it was The Fifth Jewel. 
I recall that was, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. And ultimately, the last everything. And that really comes from one line in the book where Jamie realizes that he has probably seen and experienced the last of everything in his life. So um, that's kind of the origin point of this story. Um, and I want to kind of talk just briefly about the way that the story begins. Um, I added some things after the book was actually published, a section called Exogenesis, to give you more of a sense of the larger world, it'll create more of a sense of the greater mythology as the action is going on. And Exogenesis is flashbacks. It's the origin points of this story as they took place elsewhere. So page one of The Last Everything, it actually begins with an exogenesis segment. And it takes place at Lake Vernon, Alabama, three years before the beginning of our primary story, our chase into the night, if you were. Marlena Sheridan brought one son and one monster to this version of Earth because the fools she married sought adventure. No, no, Tom argued. They aren't cave dwellers. Their homes have environmental controls. Communication tech is rudimental, but they show progress. True, they slaughter livestock, disregard their poor, and pollute their oceans. How is this different from most of the colonies? Hmm. Her fate might have been worse. They could have been ordered to 19th century Ukraine or another Earth disguised as Cossacks or sent to a fold in the jungles or Indonesia Prime. She visited there once, a day trip from the art carrier Oasis, and returned with a virus. She vowed never to set foot on a colony world again. Not that this earth was knew anything about colonies. She scoffed at their scientific limitations, a few trips to the moon, a shell of a space station, robot crawlers on Mars, and seven billion planet-wrecking people in need of culling. And that's how we begin sort of setting the stage for The Last Everything. So if you want to get a little bit more in depth into The Last Everything, it's right here on Amazon. Here's the product page. And you know where to go to check out that look inside to see what's going on there because you know that's going to be pretty cool. And give me your thoughts. Give me your feedback. And let me know if you like this video. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well and I will see you the next time and we get a little bit more in depth into what's going on with the impossible future.